we are under his blood this morning.
worship him, we have to live this today. To worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is the one whom we have to live for today. The Lord God wants us to worship him. He said that they that worship him must do what? Come on, say like you know it this morning. They that worship him must worship him in? In spirit and in truth. To God be the glory that we can worship our king. No matter what come our way, we can still stand up and worship our king. Doesn't something good? When we are on the mountain top, we can do what? Worship our king. When we are in the valley, we can still worship him. Because he is the Lord of Lords. He is our savior. And he is our king. So to God be the glory this morning. Let me thank the worship team this morning. The musician. The IT tech and all you who have sing so lustily this morning. Let's give God a big praise. The ability to see is one man's greatest environment. Only those who derive, derive of it after knowing its blessing can fully appreciate it. Think of those who are born blind. A blind man once said he will be glad when he gets to heaven so he can see Christ and the redeemed. Let's turn our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20. We just want to read verses 12. You can just stand one more time for the reading of God's word this morning. Verse 12, Second Chronicles chapter 20. We're just reading verses 12, but I'll be referring to other portion of parts of that verse that chapter as we go through this morning. O oh, our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know what to do. But our eyes are upon thee. But our eyes are upon thee. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you this morning for your goodness. We thank you that our eyes can focus upon you this morning. Let your word now, O oh God, as you speak to us, bless us in a mighty and special way. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much. You may have your seat. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in a situation and you don't know what to do? Huh? I think all of us, at one time in our life, have faced that situation. In that, we don't know what to do. Well, what we notice here, if we, already, if we read that whole chapter already, we will realize that Judah and Jehoshaphat faced a situation where the people of Moab, Aaron, and the Ammonites were coming against them. And I want to say to us this morning, brothers and sisters, there are times in our lives when we try to do it ourselves. 
when we try to do things ourselves. But let me hasten to say to us this morning that we cannot do it ourselves. We may try, but we will fail. And thank God this morning that the king realized that he cannot do it himself. So he has to rely, rely on somebody. And as he realized, realized that he has to rely upon Jesus and God, he said, our eyes are upon thee. This morning, we, our responsibility is to fix our eyes on Jesus. The word of God declares, look unto Jesus who is the author and finisher of our faith. So if we look at that portion of scripture again, verses 12, we'll understand that the situation was, is, was real. The people were coming against him. We understand also that in our life today, there are real situations. And our only way, way out is to look to God. Jehovah Father didn't run to the old man. He didn't seek the false God. Too many times today we find that we do that. How much like the heart he cries saying, God, I don't know what to do, but I'm asking you to show me what to do. Jehovah Father could not call on the government to bail him out. And there are plenty of bailing out going on these days in this COVID-19. Neither he could not call on the great American to help him. But he simply said, God, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Too many times when the odds are against us, we turn to something else. We look at something else. But this morning, I want to realize, tell you this morning that the help is in Jesus. And it's only when these things fail us whom we have turned to, then we see it fit to turn to Jesus. I'm encouraging us this morning. Our first step should be turn to Jesus. We noticed that Jehovah didn't run to anybody. But he ran to Jesus. In verses 3 and 4 of that same chapter. And Jehovah fear set himself to do what? To seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together and asked help of the Lord even out of all the city of, cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. You see who they asked help from? The Lord. The Lord they asked help from. Many times when we, when we think we should turn our eyes on Jesus and look fully in his wonderful face so that the situation and the things of Earth will go strangely them, we turn it somewhere else. We turn it somewhere else. We look to somewhere else. Jesus is our last resort. But I am saying to us this morning, our first resort should be Jesus. God was Jehovah's first first resort. You said we saw what he said in verses 3. That he do what? He seek the Lord. He seek the Lord. He look to see what God have in store for him. He understand that the situation was real. The people who was coming against him and against Judah was more than the amount of people there. So the situation is real. This morning, we need to watch the Lord and not the crowd. 
Jehovah didn't see the crowd, but he saw one person, God, this morning. He saw God. He saw God this morning. We today, as a people, we watch the crowd. And sad to say that we Christians, we watch the crowd too much. We watch the crowd too much. So if the crowd is going this way, we want to go that way with the crowd. If the crowd is going that way, we want to go that way with the crowd. And sometimes we don't stop to wonder if it is the right way. We don't stop. And sometimes when we see the crowd, which can be the mountain before us, we get fearful. And we wonder what next to do. And by wondering what next to do, because we see the mountain, because we see the crowd, then we do what we should not have done. But thank God this morning that instead of we look at the crowd, we can look at Jesus this morning. Yes, we can turn our eyes on him. And in these days, we need to do that this morning. We need to see Christ. We need to see him for who he is to us this morning. Jehovah didn't watch his neighbor. And a lot of watching neighbor watching is going on today. Not to see if anybody will come in to break their, house, their houses. Not to see if anybody will come to do anything that is wrong. But a lot of neighbor watching is going on today. So if my neighbor do this, I want to do something. What? Better. If my neighbor have this, I want to have something more. A lot of big houses you see going around town today and in those um, other parts of the country. When one person builds one and it's a good size, and I come in, in, what I do? I want to build a bigger one. Isn't that so? Yeah. You go to the Hill and King Garden and look at them. Look at the first house that was built there and the second and the third. See how much has built and come much bigger. Because we watch our neighbor. And when we watch our neighbor, we find ourselves doing what our neighbors are doing. Because we watch them and we want to go bigger than them. If Jehovah have watched the neighbor, then trouble will be in, the, in his camp. He watched God this morning. He looked at what God will have him to do. Let me ask you this morning, where are your eyes? Are you watching the crowd? Are you watching your neighbor? We need to watch the Lord and not the church people. Can I say that again? We need to watch the Lord and not the church people. Too many times as Christians, we fail in our duty because we watch the other church people. We watch our church friends and we fail in our duty. God is calling each and every one of us to do something for him. So if my other brother or sister don't want to do their part, then I will do my part. The thing here is that they and God will have a good conversation. But I am called to do my part and to watch God, the Lord and not the church people. You see, Jehovah thought they didn't watch the other people in Judah. But let's look what he do in verses 5 to 9 of the same chapter. 
And Jehovah Fat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem and in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our Father, art thou not God in heaven? And rulest not thou over the kingdom of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Thou art not our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of the land before thy people Israel, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever. And they dwell therein, and have built thee a sanctuary death in for thy name's sin. If, when evil come upon us as the sword, judgment, a pestilence, a famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence for thy name is in this house. And we cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help us. Glory to God this morning. We could, he said that what? We cry unto thee in our affliction. And he, he, he speak four words because he said, we know that you will help us. And this morning, as we look at this portion of scripture, we can also say to ourselves, God will help me. God will see me through. I'm not watching the crowd. I'm not watching my neighbors. I'm not watching the, the church people. But I know that my God will help me. Because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If we look at verses 7, we will recognize that Jehovah God recognized God for what he has done for them. He said, Are not thou our God who did us drive out the inhabitants of the land before the people of Israel and give it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever? He is saying, God, you are the same one. When the people need help, you help them. And now we need help. Step in and help us. This morning, we can ask God to step in and help us. We can ask God to come to us this morning because we need him. This life we cannot live without God this morning. Verse 9 he was saying to God that these things can come upon us, but we are in your presence. Yes, we are in the presence of God. We cannot run from the presence of God. No matter what come our way, we cannot run from the presence of God. So we can say, Lord, we are in your presence and I need you. He said, and we bear your name in this distress. And we are not running. We are not burying our heads. We are not throwing our hands up in surrender. But your name is in the house. And we know that you will help us. We know that you will hear us. They were in the house in sanctuary and Jehovah Fat was saying your name is in this house we are not running anyway we cannot run our situation is real church this morning our situation today is real 
We cannot say, no, it's not real. It's real. But we can also say, Lord, I am in your present. I am in your present. And I know you will hear me. And I know you will help me. Today, today, all our help comes from the Lord God. Today, all our help comes from the Lord God. The psalmist David said in Psalms 121, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from what? From whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, with which made heaven and earth. Oh, glory to God this morning. That when we look to Jesus, we can find help. If we get something new, a uh, new, whether whatever it is, and we're going through the book, it will tell us that when we need help, where to go. Where to go? Who to look, where to look to find help? Just recently, I was putting up a new television for my mother. And all I do, I could not get the screen to show any picture. It gave a website. And I went to the website, and I get help. And this picture was able to show. Isn't God much more understanding better than these? Isn't God no better than these? Isn't God our helper better than these? Because I could have gone there and still I did not find the help that I need. But you see, when we go to Jesus, it's a sure thing that when we look unto him, he will help us and give us the right help that we need. And that's why Israel said to God, God, we cannot go unless you go with us. And we can stand on these words today and say, Lord, unless you go with us, we cannot go. We cannot make it. They know without God's help, they cannot make it. And sometimes, you know what, bring the problem, even though we look to God, doubt come our way. I wonder if he will do it. I wonder if God will hear me. I wonder. But these days, friends, we cannot wonder. God said it, and he will do it. Once we ask, and we turn our eyes and look to him the way we are, brothers and sisters, this morning, he will help us. He will help us. David didn't see Goliath. Tall. Nine feet some. A little statue. David didn't see him as tall as he is. As many war he have won. They didn't see him. David saw God who can destroy this big man no matter how big he think he is. And that's why David said the battle is not mine, but the Lord's. Our situation is not ours this morning. No battle is ours this morning. And when we want to fight the enemy, we have to look at him right in his face. Because he's real. David didn't turn his back on Goliath. He said, boy, you big. It's real. No, he looked to God. He looked to God. We cannot fight this battle alone. 
David recognized that he couldn't fight it alone, neither did Jehoshaphat. But we can fight it with Jesus this morning. With Christ in our vessel, Christ, we can smile at every storm this morning. We can smile at every storm because we know the God whom we serve is able to help us. We know the God whom we serve is able to deliver us. And we know the God whom we serve will fight for us. We have no power in ourselves. We have no power to face that vast army that is before us this morning. Day by day we have been attacked. None of us can say we didn't... We do not be attacked by the enemy day by day. Some form, somehow, he tried. But thank God that when he tried, he did not succeed. And even though he succeeded, we know where to look. Because we look to Jesus this morning. My encouragement to all of us is to be like the people. We do not know what to do. We do not know how to make it. But all we know is that our eyes are upon you. God, our eyes are upon you. Luke 11, 34 says, the light of the body is the eye. Yes, no one understands like God this morning. Yes, no one cares about our God this morning. Yes, no one satisfied like our God this morning. I can say yes, no one knows about our God this morning. No one feels like our God this morning. No one talks like our God this morning. No one can survive like our God this morning. Yes, God's grace is sufficient. That's why our eyes should be upon him. And him alone. Lord, we look to you this morning. There is no other one else whom we can look to. The situation is real. You can say that this morning. And when we look to God... He gives us direction. If we, if we look at verse 16, in that same chapter, God directs them where to go. He said, Tomorrow, go ye down against them. Behold, they will come up by the cliff of Ziph. And you shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jeru. God direct them where to go. Look at verse 17. You shall not need to fight in this battle. But do what? Set yourself. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you this morning. You see, God said to the people, you will not need Have we ever found ourselves in any situation and we just lift ourselves up to God and say, Lord, this is yours. Fight for me. And you stand still and wait. You stand still and wait. 
Moses in Exodus chapter 14 verses 13 and 14 and Moses said unto the people fear ye not do what stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he will show to you today for the Egyptian whom you have seen today you shall see them again no more forever for the Lord shall do what? shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace in every situation this morning we understand that God is saying that I will fight for you all you need to do is to bring the problem. Come to me. Look to me. Then stand still. Then stand still. Then stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. For today. The things that you see that is before you. Your stumbling blocks, your mountains, your valleys, your rough path, you will see them no more. Oh, praise God this morning. For God who we can just rely upon. And say, Lord, here I am. I surrender to you. Because he knows all our problems, you know. Let us not fool ourselves that God does not know no situation that we are going through. He knows it. But he wants us to come. As he said, come boldly to the throne, to the throne of grace. See, when we trust God, our eyes should be upon him. When we trust God, we will see him. Because he said, I promise you that I will show you great and mighty things that you may not even know or think about. I don't think that Jehovah fat people there was what was re thinking that when they pray, this is what will happen. God will say to them, just go down and stand still and see the salvation probably they were thinking that he will just run the people back or he will give them strength to fight God knows us this morning and let me say the devil is no match for our God this morning he's no match he will try to try to say oh I'm better than him I can do more for you than, for, for, than God. No. Our God. I'll do every single thing that the devil think he can do this morning. Every single thing. So if we look back at verses 12 in that chapter. Every one of us. At times find ourselves in some situation that we may think we don't have the way out the odds are not good for us as it was like for Jehoshaphat they were great and so the odds are great for us today some of us maybe right now in that valley of the shadow of death but I want us to look at the king's prayer remember I said the king Jehoshaphat was a king and he had power. He could have said to his army, let's go and fight. Could have called all the people together. But he said, look at his prayer. He said, Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. He saw the value in prayer. He saw the value in looking to Jesus. He saw the value in applying God's strategy before he do anything. Is that us this morning? We have to look. 
Elijah said to Elisha, if you want to receive the double portion that you ask for, you have to do one thing. Look to see when I've been taken up. See, you have to look. If you want a double portion, this morning, we have to look to God. If we want him to, to make, remove what is before us, I'm not saying that if we remove some things, some will not come back, but our God is able to see us through this morning. David said in Psalms 141 and verses 8, Psalms 141 and verses 8. But my eyes are upon thee, O God, the Lord. In thee I put my trust. Leave not my soul to destitute. But my eyes are where? Upon thee. I put my trust in you. We cannot say that I'm looking to God and do not put our trust in him. Our responsibilities this morning is to keep our eyes on Jesus. See, when we keep our eyes off of him, we see what we are not to see. Then it makes us do what we are not to do. Peter, when Jesus said, come, walk with me on the water, he was looking, and he was able to do what? Make the steps. He was able to make the steps. But he took his eyes off. And when he took his eyes off, he started sinking. When we take our eyes off Jesus, we will start sinking. We will start sinking this morning. So we have to set our faith and put it in God this morning. We have to stand on the rock of ages. And the rock of ages is Jesus this morning. He speaks with authority because he never fails. Watch your team come, please. He never fails. He never fails this morning. He will never fail us. We can read right through all the scriptures of the Bible. And we will realize that no one who call unto him faithfully, he fails them. No, he do not fail them. He helped them this morning. He is here to help you this morning. Yes, just look fully. Oh, 
eyes upon Jesus. Yes. Go fully in his wonderful faith. Your situation is real. But the faith Jesus now. Stand still. Just carry the real situation to him. Jehovah Fat saw the real situation. It was real. And he carried it to God. Say, Lord. I don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. Personalize that this morning. Lord, I, if you want to call your name, you can. Do not know what to do. Because it is more than us. It is more than me. It's more than me. But my eyes is upon you. Whatever situation you're facing, whatever valley you are in right now, whatever mountain that is before you, Whatever rough path you are trodden on. Oh, the seas are rough. Look to Jesus. He can calm it. And bring peace. Oh, Father. Each one of us in this sanctuary now, and maybe those who are at home, each one of us, there is something that is bigger than us that we are facing. We are going through. There is something that is more than us. We look to you now, God. We turn our eyes to you. We don't know what to do. We don't know, Lord, but we look to you. Who is our helper? Who have the answer? Who is our way maker? We look to you now, God. We look to you. We forget about everything else. We forget about what troubled our mind. And we look to you now, God. We call on you. We call on you. We stand firm on your promises and your word that says, call on you and answer. Jehovah Fat, they call and you answer. And you are the same yesterday today, God. And we believe that you will answer us. You will not fail us. So we stand still. And we will see the glory in our lives. Thank you for doing it, Lord. Somebody this morning, I've just given over everything to God and and you, you realize that God is answering your prayer. Just lift up your hand and give him praise. Just lift your hand and give him praise this morning.
sing it again for your dream Bless us, oh God. Take us in safety to our homes. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the day. Get home safely. Praise the Lord. <laughs>